Welcome back to part two of the first service at Morganville Baptist Church. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5 there in verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Just as last week we saw in verse 14, the Lord says, those who are his, you are the light of the world. This week, we're looking at verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. There is purpose that God has for his children. Even though we still live in a sinful, fallen world, we're to share the light of God, the impact of God, even that it is salty. We look at the aspect of tasteless, the Greek there in verse 13. Marino. It does translate as tasteless, but in other texts, it will translate as foolish, which is a very interesting study, but we'll look at that at a different day and in different passages. Not stated as a pun, not stated as a joke. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 says, Christians are supposed to be salty. Now, those who are not salty, much as we saw in the weeks prior, we saw false prophets. There are also false Christians false disciples. In Matthew chapter 7, there in verse 23, he will say, and I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. These are those who claim to be disciples of the Lord, but they're not. He never knew them, and we covered those uh, in weeks past. In other words, Christians are supposed to be salty, the thrown out is a reference in many aspects of Scripture uh, to judgment. Plus, how do you take salt and it not now be salty? Sodium chloride is sodium chloride. The reference for the salt of it being tasteless, oftentimes the salt that they had available to them was had other minerals in it, particularly gypsum. And it would be a level that the amount of sodium chloride in the mix would be so low. Just wasn't that salty. And not good as a preservative for meat or as a seasoner. Or it really was not adequate to use even in the sacrifices for God. The quality was just so low. At that point, it would be used as to just throw it out. If any of you remember, when you would make homemade ice cream, if you made it outside, you didn't want to pour it on the grass if you used a lot of salt. Why? You can kill the grass if you use a lot of salt. This is what they would do with low-grade, a mixture of sodium chloride, gypsum, and other minerals. They could actually use it. There'd be enough sodium chloride and other minerals in there to kill the grass, and they could actually make footpaths uh, that would help uh, keeping the paths and the roads to a varying degree since their roads were much smaller than ours and their paths were much smaller than ours. But it that was the only purpose. It wasn't a preservative. It, it had relatively no taste whatsoever. This is reference to those who pretend, those who say they're disciples, some just in going along to get along, others... Uh, out of, uh, we still pray that they would call upon Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. True Christians, the source of the wisdom and the grace that should salt their lives is God himself, both as a preservative and a taste aspect. We also see that in the Bible, oftentimes, a Christian will be the only Bible that non-Christians, the unsaved, or in some cases, discouraged Christians will see. In Colossians chapter 3, letting the word of Christ richly indwell you. Compare this with Ephesians the 5th chapter, verse 18. Do not be drunk with wine, which leads to dissipation, but be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. When these things are in the life of a Christian, the life of a disciple, these things will occur. The Holy Spirit will produce the fruit of the Spirit. God's work will be evident in a Christian's life. And that Christian will be a light in a dark world and salt in a dead, dying world. 
that needs to taste and see that the Lord is good. In the 34th, 34th Psalm, verse 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and how blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. How will they see the dramatic changes brought about in one's life, in one's day, unless they see it in a child of God? So this statement early in the Sermon on the Mount that the Lord gives, you are the salt of the earth, combines with you are the light of the world. These are ministries, both in statements of fact and commandments, that this is who we are to be in Christ. Perfectly, no. And when we fall short, we confess it, turn it all over to the Lord, and trust Him to work through us. And then we truly will be, by God's power and not ours, the salt of the earth and the light in a very dark world. This way, the focus is not upon our own problems. But God does understand we have needs, and we've covered that aspect. But we need to look first to God and then to others. For others also need help, even as we need help. But the source of all true help for us and others is God himself. So let us be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, as rely not upon ourselves, but upon the word of God, the will of God, and the Holy Spirit of God filling us, working through us, and transforming us to make us the salt of the earth and the light in a very dark world. Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful for so many blessings that you've given us. We pray, Father, if there be any who've never truly called upon your Son as their Lord and Savior, they would do so today. And for those, Father, that have, we ask for your continued blessing, the transformation of being filled with your Holy Spirit to make us, by your power and not ours, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. For our source is truly found in you and not ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember our challenge for Father's Day. Attention. We're looking for John Wayne quotes that have biblical underpinnings. That's for Father's Day, June the 21st. John Wayne quotes that have biblical underpinnings. Morgan Mill Baptist Church, Post Office Box 38, Morgan Mill, Texas, 76465. Thank you so much for being with us for the first service. We look forward to seeing you next week. And may God's blessings and his provisions be upon you. And by his power, may we, the body of Christ, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. By God's grace, power, and filling.